evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Here's a quick civics lesson. What's politics? Well, politics is a system that allows people who violently disagree with each other to reach compromise without shedding blood. It's worked well for a long time in this country. But when one side decides it is no longer willing to compromise, that system breaks down. Without compromise, you no longer have politics. Instead, you have an especially fanatical form of religious belief. ISIS, for example, is not a political organization. Its leaders reject accommodation of any kind. Its leaders assume that everything they do has the approval of a higher power. They are good people. They know that. They know their beliefs are not simply correct. They're the only possible beliefs. Anyone who disagrees with them is, by definition, immoral. So a system like that does not allow for the possibility that good people might be mistaken once in a while or reach different conclusions sincerely. People with different opinions are, again, by definition, bad people. In fact, they may not even be people at all. They might be subhuman. They must be converted to the faith or crushed and eliminated. This is not an American way of looking at the world, and yet suddenly it's everywhere. And unfortunately, it now defines parts of the modern Democratic Party. Joe Biden didn't know this. Biden has been in Democratic politics all of his life. But he's taken the last couple of years off. He's been flying around the world getting rich by giving high-priced speeches. By the time Biden decided he wanted to run for president yet again, his party had changed completely. But nobody told him. So he made the mistake just the other day of saying this about Mike Pence. The fact of the matter is, it was followed on by a guy who's a decent guy, our vice president, who stood before this group of allies and leaders and said, I'm here on behalf of President Trump. And there was dead silence. Dead silence. He's a decent guy, Biden said of Pence. That's an old-fashioned way to talk. That's how people in Washington, political Washington, used to talk about each other. It was one way that they reminded themselves that politics may be important, but it's not everything. Every political opponent is also, on some level anyway, a human being, and a fellow American. Our common humanity is stronger than our political differences. That was the assumption that they had and have had at least since the Civil War. And by the way, it has to be the assumption that all of us have if we're going to live together in the same country. Cynthia Nixon disagrees with this. Nixon is a former actor. She's now a political extremist. She spends a lot of time on Twitter yelling at people. When she saw what Biden said about Pence, she was enraged. Cynthia Nixon disagrees with Mike Pence's views on gay rights questions. Therefore, she knows that Pence cannot be a decent person. It's just not possible. She told Joe Biden this on Twitter. Joe Biden had no choice but to agree with her. You're right, Cynthia, Biden wrote back. There is nothing decent about being anti-LGBTQ rights, and that includes the vice president. People used to say that Joe Biden was a decent guy, too. But in the modern Democratic Party, there are no decent guys anymore. There are only people who are with the program and apostates who deviate from it. Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard suddenly is in the latter category. How did that happen? By any sane measure, Gabbard is a staunch progressive. But she does hold heterodox opinions on foreign policy. Instead of agreeing with Bill Kristol's foreign policy, she still believes what many progressives used to believe. She wants to keep the U.S. out of pointless foreign conflicts and instead focus on domestic concerns. And for having that opinion, she's almost been expelled from her own party. Watch. They've dismissed you as sucking up to this dictator. You're a bad person is basically what they're saying. Has anybody actually debated you on the points that you're making? No, no. Constantly I see, uh, again, people from both parties instead uh, resorting to name calling or superficial attacks because uh, they refuse to engage on the substance of this argument about why they continue to uh, push for and try to wage these regime change wars, ignoring the disastrous consequences on the people in those countries and the American people. So that's suddenly a very controversial thing to say in the modern Democratic Party, a place where there is no room for dissent anywhere on any issue. On Wednesday, for example, a handful of Democrats joined with Republicans to add an amendment to a universal background checks bill in the House. That amendment would require reporting a gun buyer to ICE if that buyer is an illegal alien, a group that is not allowed to buy guns in the United States. In a closed-door meeting after the vote, the Democrats who joined with Republicans on that were reportedly denounced by party leadership for their racism. The party's new ideological enforcer, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, warned that Democrats who helped Republicans in any way would go on a, quote, list 
and would have primary challenges next time they ran. So that's what extremism looks like. The enemy is 100% wrong, and we are 100% right, always. They are going to hell, and we're saved. What is happening here is a sin against God. I believe that. Jesus said, suffer the little children unto me. He did not say, let the children suffer. A time in which we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Thank God there wasn't a wall that stopped him from seeking refuge in Egypt. Thank God that wall wasn't there. And thank God there wasn't an administration like this. And while we're doing the Lord's work by ministering to the needs of God's creation, uh, they are ignoring those needs, which is to dishonor the God who made them. Mm -hmm. We're doing God's will. We're on God's side. God loves us. God does not love the other side. They're sinners. They're going against God's will. And in fact, you know what? They could be Nazis. This is the United States of Germ United States of America. It isn't Nazi Germany. Bottom line, Donald Trump increasingly looks like Hitler in Nazi Germany. <laughs> Much like Hitler took over the Nazi party, Trump has taken over the Republican party. If you vote for Trump, then you, the voter, you not Donald Trump, are standing at the bar border like Nazis go you here you here they are the tactics that have been used through the through history by the worst purveyors of pure evil including slave traders including Nazis including terrorists so what you're looking at that's not politics it's a cult nuance is the enemy accommodation is a sin ask too many questions or think too many independent thoughts and you will be denounced you will wind up on Commissar Ocasio-Cortez's list we reject this completely. It's totalitarian. It's also stupid and boring. It's a replacement for thought. It's, by the way, destroying the country as well. We will always welcome we dis people we disagree with onto this show. We assume they are decent people. And by the way, mostly they are decent people. We'll do our best to find common ground with them and anyone else whenever we can, because why wouldn't we? And that's why you'll often see sincere leftists on this show treated with respect. Tulsi Gabbard, Glenn Greenwald, Ro Khanna, Michael Tracy, many others. We disagree with these people on a lot of things, but not on everything, and that's the point. But most important of all, they are Americans, just like us, and that matters most. We need to remember that. But while we're making great strides, and our country is doing as well, and maybe in many ways better than it's ever done before, Democrat lawmakers are now embracing socialism. They want to replace individual rights with total government domination. Just this week, more than 100 Democrats in Congress signed up for a socialist takeover of American health care. That's President Trump warning conservatives of a socialist nightmare that could overtake our country if we allow it. Here now with a reaction to this and so much more, nationally syndicated radio show host Dennis Prager, whose Prager University website had more than a billion, a billion, that's with a B, <laughs> views last year. And his latest book, Rational Bible, is the best-selling Bible commentary in America today. So what's it like being on First, top? I just want to tell you how great it is to see you in person. I know. We, we're always across uh, the country. Yes, in, across the country. That's right. something. First thing I said to Dennis Prager was, you're a lot bigger than I thought you were. Yeah, I'm 6'4", and everyone imagines me at 5'8", and I still don't know why, but it, that's fine. And everyone imagines that I'm 6'4", <laughs> and I'm nowhere near 6'4", so there you have it. All right, let me get to the, to the meat of this. All right, yes. let's talk socialism. The president just yeah. talked about the fact that they want to uh, uh, eliminate individual rights and replace it with total government dominated control you got a thing about socialism what's wrong with socialism Dennis there are many things and I've spent my life studying this I was I at the Russian Institute at Columbia for my graduate work so my whole life I've been studying the left socialism communism so number one though not in moral significance but in significance is it it is a it is an economic failure and there's a very simple reason. Only, that's key, only capitalism creates wealth. No other economic way of life, system, philosophy has ever created wealth. Socialism spends the money that capitalism creates. It, it, no one can deny that. Even, even leftists can't deny that. They will say it's the moral thing to do then to spend what capitalism 
creates because there's inequality and all the things that they object to. But they cannot deny that it itself makes no money. So it depends on capitalism to even exist. So that when Margaret Thatcher said socialism is great until you run out of other people's money. That's correct. Money, That's she it. was on the same page well, as you. Totally. Well, she, Margaret Thatcher. It was fabulous. Was Ms. Ms. Clarity. Yes. Th yes. Th th no, that's exactly right. Secondly, uh, it, it, it always deprives people of freedom. Because it makes the government bigger and bigger, and, and as the government gets bigger, in every instance there is no exception, people's rights diminish. America was founded, and it's the only country founded on limited government. Okay, let me ask you this. Every candidate running for president on the Democrat side believes in socialism. The wild part about this is when Bernie Sanders ran uh, three years ago, when he said he was a Democrat socialist, I think everybody kind of went, ooh, and now it's mainstream. That's right. Isn't that amazing? Why? Because the left has taken over the liberals. Liberalism uh, has, been, uh, has been vanquished by leftism. It's been kidnapped. Uh, if, you, uh, if you would have asked a liberal 50 years ago, are you pro-socialist? He would have said, what, are you crazy? Yeah. That's crazy. The, the biggest anti-communists were the labor unions in the 1930s and 40s and 50s. It is, but liberals have, have wimped out the battle against the left. Alan Dershowitz is a rare example of a living liberal who is anti-left. Okay. All right. I got to I got to do this now. Now, uh, you are making a movie, No yeah. Safe Spaces, with of all people Adam Carolla. Why? Adam Carolla and I are the closest human beings with disparate backgrounds that exists in America. <laughs> All right. And, you, and should we, we show this? Yes, I think you. I, All right, yes, let's show this not? shot yeah. that we okay, have. Okay, yep. It's oppressor versus oppressed, and you're a hero if you're on the side of the oppressed. Do not choose the side of the oppressor! You cannot be happy if you think yourself a victim. We don't agree with Mr. Prater's views at all. We have common sense in common, and that means we have everything in common. We're fighting for America, which is the greatest experiment. In, in liberty and decency in human history, and I don't want to lose it. When does this come out? When can Later we see it? this year, and, and it, it, it'll knock people's socks off. They will laugh and cry at the same time. It shows what's happening on the campuses, the, the, the deprivation of free speech. Right. Did you hear the guy said, you know, we don't want Mr. Prager? That was University of Wyoming. That was not, that, Wyoming. That was not Yale. That was not Berkeley. That was University of Wyoming. It's a whole generation coming up with completely different sense of who we are as Americans and what we stand for. That's right. Well, the young generation, look, it makes sense. My generation screwed up the next generation. All right, as a general statement, it did. And I don't have a lot of time. Tell me quickly how. Okay, they made them narcissists. You have rights, no obligations. That's in it. You said a nutshell, there's your nutshell. There's a nutshell. Dennis Prager, we love having you. We look uh, forward to having you, you come back. Thank you. Thanks Thank so you. much. Oh, 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 oh,